Thank you for watching today's worship service from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Our message today is... Grace and peace are yours through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Dear baptized children of God, in those old days of little children sitting around the family radio and listening to episodes of The Lone Ranger are, are quite a ways behind us in, in many ways. We in America are becoming an increasingly visual audience. We want to see things. We don't want to hear about the news. You better have some amateur video showing us what's going on. We don't want to hear about a friend telling us or writing to us about their vacation, their trip. We want to see some pictures. We want to see some good ones. And when it comes to sports, my goodness, we're not going to take a referee's word for it. We better have a camera angle on that, a high-definition camera that can zoom in and show each blade of grass moving as that football player's foot gets close to the sideline, right? And you can see it all on the large screen jumbotron that you've got in your living room. We are an increasingly visual audience. We want to see it. Whatever the news is, we want to see it with our eyes. But what happens when something is hidden, when something is quiet, when it's not very visible or well-known or easily seen. To our culture, out of sight means out of mind. If something is important, it's going to be right out there in the open for everyone to see. Important news isn't, or at least shouldn't, be hidden. But that is just how God has chosen to reveal the glory of his one and only Son, our Savior, in a quiet, calm way, almost hidden. Not with the flamboyance, not with the fireworks, not with the pomp and circumstance that you might expect of the Son of God coming into this world. Jesus was born as a baby, a humble baby, a poor baby, in a simple stable in the little town of Bethlehem. As 21st century Americans, we might prefer that God would show up in this world, that God would reveal his power today with loud horns and fireworks and all kinds of pomp and circumstance, but he doesn't most often. Today we see the example of the night guardsman at a prison in Philippi who learned the joy of experiencing that quiet, hidden power of God. Paul and Silas that we hear about in this lesson from Acts chapter 16 were there in prison in Philippi. And those two men, they had seen the visible, that powerful, that awesome looking power of God before. Remember Paul, he had actually gotten knocked off his horse by that visible power of God when he was on the road to Damascus. Then that quiet power of God went to work in Paul's heart and he became the greatest missionary the Christian church has ever known. God's power, God's visible, powerful, awesome power was in Paul and Silas to enable them to do great miracles, heal people who were lame and drive out demons and do many other wonderful, powerful, miraculous signs. And that's actually what got them into this mess in Philippi in the first place. They'd come to Philippi to do mission work, and while they were there preaching about Jesus, there was this young girl that began following them around. And this girl was possessed by an evil demon, and that demon enabled her to do some pretty convincing fortune-telling, and her masters got a good deal of money off of her fortune-telling. So she starts following these men around, and the demon in her recognized that these were servants of the Most High God who were telling you the way to be saved. So she went around town proclaiming this behind Paul and Silas as they preached. And finally, after several days of this, Paul gets so irritated, he turns around and he says to the demon, come out of her in the name of Jesus. And immediately she's healed of her demon possession. Wow, isn't that awesome? Don't you think that would be great? That's the, the, the power of God on display. 
doing great and awesome things. Doesn't that bring people to faith? Doesn't that make people want to join Jesus and be on his side? It didn't really work out that way that day for Paul and Silas in Philippi. Of course, the masters of this little girl were upset that they had then lost their source of income. She could no longer do her fortune telling without that demon. They convinced the people who saw the miracle happen, who saw the girl get healed from that demon. They convinced them to capture Paul, to start a riot, to have him, Paul and Silas, flogged and thrown in prison, convinced the leaders of their town to do that to Paul and Silas without a trial. All that beautiful, awesome power of God, and what did it get them? Flogged and thrown in jail. Even still, as a believer, you and I can see the amazing, quiet power of God at work in this part of Scripture. After being stripped and beaten and thrown in the stocks, what were these miserable men doing? They weren't wallowing in self-pity, like you might expect. They weren't crying about the injustice of what they had been through. They weren't pointing out the ignorance and the, the unloving nature of the people who had done this to them. They were singing hymns and praising God in the middle of jail. When suddenly the Lord's visible power went to work again. Listen to what we read in our lesson. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. The other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. All at once the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? God rocked the foundations of that prison with a mighty earthquake. Just think about the power and precision of God that his earthquake was powerful enough to break open all the doors of the prison, to break the chains off of their arms and legs, but yet not powerful enough to knock the entire prison down on top of them. But even greater than that display of God's power, or excuse me, what did that big, great big display of God's power accomplish? After all, Paul and Silas, they didn't even make it out of the cell. None of the prisoners escaped. None of them got away. Instead of things getting better for them, now you end up with the jailer in the middle of the jail in, in the middle of the prison with his sword drawn, ready to kill himself. He was going to run him through, right, run himself through right in front of all the prisoners. Historians tell us that if prisoners escaped, if, if the jailer allowed them to get loose, that jailer could be charged with the crimes that those prisoners had committed. Apparently, this jailer feared the worst. The awesome power of God had shaken not only the foundations of that prison, but had shaken the very foundations of his life. It kind of pulled the rug right out from under him and brought him down to his knees in fear. At that moment, he knew he didn't stand a chance in front of the Roman governor for allowing the prisoners to escape. And he knew he didn't stand a chance in front of the God who had just completely torn his life to pieces in an instant. And so he was filled with fear. Our sins separate us from God and cause us to fear his wrath and punishment. Standing face to face with his almighty power would certainly destroy every single one of us because of the sinful things that we have thought and said and done in our lives. Just like that jailer on our own, we would be without any hope. Even if you live your life as good as you can, as kindly as you can, as generously as you can, there's still that small voice in your head 
that reminds you over and over of the things that you have done that were wrong and what you deserve from a holy God because of them. And you know that same confidence that tells you that people who are mean to you, people who are unjustly wrong, people who commit things and seem to, to get away with them, that voice in your head that tells you that they're going to get their just desserts somehow, in some way, down the road? Well, that same thought applies to us too, doesn't it? Even if people don't know the sinful thoughts or the sinful motives behind our actions, we know that we deserve God's wrath and punishment for them as well. But God doesn't want us to be afraid of him. Instead of displaying his almighty power by destroying us for our sins, he decided to reveal himself in a much gentler, quieter, almost hidden way. Listen to how God revealed himself with his hidden power to the jailer and his whole household. When that trembling jailer ran in to Paul and Silas and asked them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of God to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. And then immediately he and all his household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house, and set a meal before them, he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. The jailer asked what he could do to be saved, but the answer was really nothing. There is nothing you can do to save yourself because everything had already been done for him by his Savior. God reveals his grace and mercy to us through Jesus his Son. We see his redeeming love for us not in fireworks or in acts of miraculous power on this earth, but he pulls us up from the depths of despair with his grace and forgiveness and fills our hearts with true joy and happiness. Thankfully, God doesn't reveal himself and his power to us yet in earth-shattering visible power. Instead, he reveals himself to us in a little bit of water poured over the head of an infant through which God promises he works the power of the Holy Spirit to plant faith in even the heart of a little child. Through the water of baptism, God washed you clean from all of your sins. Through that little bit of water and his word, he broke the clutches of the most powerful enemy who held the power of death, the most powerful enemy the world has ever known. No earthquake, no tsunami, no hurricane, no earthly power could ever do that, but only the hidden, quiet power of God in the gospel. And it is so like our God to work this way, to reveal his power in hidden, almost, in quiet, almost hidden ways, just as he did at Christmas with the birth of the baby, just the, baby, the birth of the Christ child in the little town of Bethlehem, just like he did with the secret visit of the wise men, the humble shepherds coming to visit the baby Jesus at the stable. Just like the forerunner who prepared the way for the Savior to come was a humble, homeless guy out preaching out in the wilderness, the sinless Son of God came to be baptized by him in the Jordan River. God has chosen to reveal himself to us in such quiet and humble ways. And yet to the eyes of faith, the hidden power of God is clearly visible in all of these very humble circumstances. That jailer was overjoyed that he got to experience that hidden power of God. And he and his whole family were baptized by those two bloody prisoners. And as they were being baptized, that jailer recognized that something far greater, something far more important and more powerful than what he could see was happening. Hours before when the jailer had seen that, that visible display of God's power in the prison, he was afraid. He was afraid that his life wasn't worth living anymore. He was ready to run himself through. But after he witnessed the, the quiet, hidden power of God, the gospel at work in his heart, he was filled with an incredible joy and very excited to be able to serve the Lord and his servants and show him thanks. He had something to live for now. 
He was no longer afraid because he knew that he had Jesus as his Savior. And so he washed the wounds of Paul and Silas and set out a meal before them to eat. And he rejoiced to do it. He was happy to do it. Because something great, although not so well seen, had happened in his heart and in the hearts of his household. He had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. You may not be able to see it on a daily basis, but that same hidden quiet power of God is at work in your heart. Planted there by the Holy Spirit through the word of God and baptism, that hidden power of God keeps you firm in your faith, and through that hidden power of God that brought you to faith in him, God continues to strengthen you and build you up in faith each and every day. Through that hidden power of God at work in your heart, he has made you into a new creature that rejoices like that jailer to show your love and thanks to God each and every day. A few years ago, actually the first congregation that I served after graduating from the seminary, it was an inner city congregation and I was called to be their youth pastor, so I did a lot of working with, with the kids in school taught uh, catechism class in the mornings. A lot of the kids that I, I got to know that year were from broken homes, and many of them were not members of the church, but joined the school through the choice program. And so they didn't hear, usually didn't hear about Jesus at home from their parents, sadly. They heard about Jesus a lot in school, though. I got to share Jesus with them in catechism class, in weekly chapels, and devotions, and so forth. There's one little girl who, who was at the school in second grade, and she sticks out in my mind. She was not the, the best behaved girl, uh, and so she spent a lot of time sitting on a chair outside of the principal's office, kind of in a place where I would often walk by, often see her across from my office. And even though she wasn't really well behaved, the Lord was quietly at work in her heart through the gospel. And one day she came over, walked over to me, and she said, she asked me if it would be okay if she get baptized. And I was so excited. Her name was Jada, by the way. And I said, yes, absolutely. So I scheduled uh, a meeting with her mom. Obviously, I wanted to make sure it was okay. Her brother, and, her older brother and sister were also uh, students at the school. So I arrived at their house and asked Jada in front of her mom why she wanted to be baptized. And she said, so I can be a child of God and have Jesus wash all my sins away. <laughs> And just to hear that little girl speak the words of the gospel was pretty awesome. And then, <laughs> and then she and her brothers, brother and sister explained to her mom what Jesus had done for them, suffering and dying on the cross, taking all their sins away and giving them hope of eternal life in heaven. Sorry. <laughs> I think of that story often. God was at work in their hearts. And you maybe couldn't see it on the outside, but he was at work powerfully, doing miraculous, wonderful things. And that same power of God is at work in your hearts too. And whenever we share the gospel, online, here at church, when you share it with your friends, God's power is at work. And you may not see it. You may not see it with your eyes, but it's there. He's working in amazing, wonderful ways. Pray that the Lord would continue to work with his power and show us his power in quiet, humble ways. O oh Lord, work your strength. Amen. Let's stand. To him who is able to establish you by the gospel, now revealed and made known so that all nations might believe in him, to the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for watching today's worship service from St. Matthew's Lutheran Church in Stoddard. Join us for worship at church or watch our live stream Sunday mornings at 9 on Facebook and YouTube. God's blessings.